All right, so now that we have those two pieces, um, let's start talking about our header and footer pages uh, and some of the content that they're pulling in. So as you can see, we've got Bootstrap being pulled in, uh, the uh, Bootstrap theme specific styles being pulled in. Uh, we have Font Awesome, and these are all relative paths, so we need to go ahead and do something to account for those. Um, open your functions.php page uh, and that's where we're going to go ahead and start a PHP tag uh, and create some space and from there we will start building out our very first function to handle all of the content so another thing to be thinking about at this point is making sure that you have all of the assets the CSS the JavaScript and any other vendor styles all being uh, you know copied and pasted into your uh, themes directory here um, we can go ahead and copy and paste the images too into here just like that and alright so now that we've done that let's go back to our functions and start our first function which is going to be a function that we use to uh, start all of our CSS styles uh, and JavaScript code uh, and this is how it's all going to be pulled into the header and footer pages um, and a good way to preface all the names of your functions is with a unique theme specific type little code this way it doesn't have any conflicts with future plugins that you might download that uh, might have named their function the exact same thing as the one you named it um, might not be a big issue uh, in our case, but it's just a good practice to get into. So we'll call this advanced bootstrap to WordPress uh, underscore theme underscore styles uh, through your parenthesis and curly brackets. Now we are going to utilize a function inside of our function called WP and Q uh, style. Uh, now this function takes a couple of parameters. Uh, the first would be a name. So we'll go back to our index really fast and we'll see all the way at the top what is the first thing that they pull in through CSS. As you know, CSS stands for cascading style sheets. So we need to make sure we keep the same order for ours so that we don't have any conflicting styles. Um, so the first thing would be bootstrap. So let's go ahead and call in bootstrap. And then we'll end it with CSS there. All right, now we make a comma and we're going to finish this off with um, the path to this asset. So when we create normal websites um, we can just create relative paths pretty easily uh, but since WordPress everything is located in this um, theme folder you have to go through this long path to kind of figure out where it is well what happens too if you start to get in pages that are uh, children of other pages so now um, if you were to hard code in the relative path it would be wrong for some and right for others so uh, luckily WordPress created a function that we can use called get template directory URI um, and then we just use the period or the concatenation operator uh, and we are going to just add the rest of the path. So what this will get us is our domain name. Uh, in this case, it's like localhost because we're on a uh, local server. Uh, and then it's going to get WP content, themes, and advanced B2W. Uh, and that's, you know, our, I think it's B2WP. Uh, so that is our theme directory. Uh, main path and this way we don't have to memorize it and if we ever change anything down the line the function will take care of 
just making those changes in this file and all of our styles will be intact. All right, so now how do we get in the path? Well, since we just copied all the folders from the Bootstrap theme, um, we're going to just copy the same path here. But there's one thing we need to remember to do. This function gets the folder but does not end it with a forward slash. So if we were to paste this in, this would not be the correct path. We need to make sure that we add a forward slash so it doesn't combine our theme name with a vendor, uh, then not being able to find that path because it doesn't exist. Um, and then now that we're done with that, we'll just end it with a colon. So now we are just going to copy and paste this uh, a couple times, changing out the paths the exact same way. And I will go ahead and do that and get back with you as soon as I am done. Okay, uh, so now that I've done the other two really quickly, um, there's one last one, and I pasted the awesome font awesome one again. Uh, that's because it's our style CSS. And as you'll remember, the style CSS just goes in the root template directory, so we don't need to put uh, anything before that, just style.css. Perfect. All right, now we need to call another function called add action and inside of here it's going to take two parameters one is just space that out a little bit uh, WP and Q scripts and then comma the name of our function which is W2BA2. There we go. And now we're done with that. Now, the JavaScript is done in just about the same way. So we would create a function, um, preface it the same way, and then just use JS. And then same deal with the curly brackets. Um, the only difference is that we use WP and Q script uh, instead of WP and Q style. Um, now that's the main difference is probably just where it's going to be loaded on the page um, and what function loads it. So uh, from here, it's the exact same process. So we can literally just copy this above. and make sure we end everything with semicolons. Uh, and then we need to go to our index page again, scroll all the way down to where the JavaScript is loaded. Uh, and you can see we have jQuery. We don't need jQuery because Bootstrap, I'm sorry, uh, WordPress comes with jQuery by default. Uh, but we will need the Bootstrap min JS and everything below it. Um, these may not end up being useful once we switch out how the uh, contact form works but uh, we'll go ahead and add them now anyways just in case so i will go ahead and do that and i'll get back to you as soon as i finish now the last thing we're going to need to add is add action and just like above we are going to do wp and q scripts comma the name of the function and semicolon and save that out. Okay, now we need to go back to our header. So what we're gonna have to do is remove all of these relative calls to assets and then use PHP um, and then call a function called WP head semicolon perfect okay so that what that's going to do is that's the function that will then look in the functions and call this action um, with all the other scripts and styles that are associated with WordPress so this is kind of like feeding them into that same stream by adding this action uh, and then to make sure that they're called at the right place 
we call them right here uh, and that guarantees that we will have the correct things um, in the correct order uh, so that these are called last and we're not dealing with these because these are not relatively um, called these are hosted on other servers uh, or CDN um, so don't need to worry about those uh, for this tutorial now we're gonna go ahead and go to the footer and go to all of this. We need to get rid of the jQuery as well. And here we're going to use a PHP tag and just call WP footer. Uh, save that out. All right. So now we have our home page that is calling in the header and footer from our header and footer files and we also have a fallback index page um, but if we go to our admin here and we were to just visit the site let's see what we get okay so pretty close uh, to what it's on the main site. You can see that the text for clean blog is there, uh, but that's going to be another video. And so we're going to go ahead and end this video here. Thank you for watching everyone. Like, comment, and subscribe. It helps keep me going. Um, if that felt a little bit over your head, you could click back to the simple conversion. Uh, if you're ready to go to part three, click through now. Thanks.